Hello everybody, Marty the Off-Grid Gecko here. My hair is looking quite... Uh, I don't really look in the mirror that often. It looks kind of... Wow. Anyways, um, I should be in bed right now sleeping because i got to be at work. And I usually wake up at like 6 a.m. But I don't know. I've been doing research on some some stuff to add to my channel. So basically what I do is go through other YouTube videos and I look for holes in what... Um, people are saying about different kinds of things and like where are the holes, where is the stuff that they're not covering, what haven't they covered, what would I add to this video, that kind of thing. And uh, got a little cooked up tonight watching some of the bushcraft guys, so I put a, um, a blog post up already with basically my rant. So you don't have to worry about that in the video, I already got it all out of my system. If you want to read that, you can go to offgreatgecko.com and uh, check it out um, but I figured since I'm so amped up because I had a really long day at work and I basically am up and I have nothing to do I would go ahead and talk a little bit about um, some tier one emergency stuff so if you don't remember from the intro video for this uh, section for preparedness um, tier one is like your low level stuff, your flat tires and things like that, which is another reason I'm amped up tonight because I'm looking everywhere to try and find my jumper cables for my truck and I can't find them anywhere. Um, I think I got a pretty good beat on where they might be. They might be out in the shed, but I don't want to make another trip out there to, to go digging through some more boxes. Um, anyways, I switched all the stuff from my old rig to my new rig and so... Some things got misplaced and it was about time for me to go through. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys and share with you um, your basic emergency kit is not going to be... You don't have to go and buy a bunch of crap that you don't need. Like most of what you need to put in your emergency kit, surprise, you already have. You want to know how I know you already have it? Because you're already using it. Um, so I wanted to go through one example of a type of emergency kit and this isn't even really emergency kit this is just a bag that I carry with me every day it's always riding in the back seat of the truck with me usually and there are some items in here that I hope I'll never have to use and there are some items in here that I use almost daily and I burn up and the only reason that there's anything brand new in this bag is because I've already like gone through all the all the stuff and I just recently got done repacking it this week um, so I'll go through some basics first yes this is a very expensive bag you don't need a very expensive bag but I got this from or free actually from doing some when I was freelance writing um, one of the guys I was writing for ran like survival forums and he had a couple businesses dealing with survival type gear and stuff like that and guns and seracoding and all kinds of things of that nature. So when I went to visit in Houston, I got the bag. So sorry for the 511 tactical bags and all this other stuff. Um, but, and I found this little pocket on another piece of gear that I had and I was like, that's the perfect size for my little first aid kit. I just threw it on there. But an ordinary school bag will work in 90% of the cases. If your bag that you're carrying, for whatever reason, is too heavy that it's going to rip a school bag, you might want to rethink all the stuff you have in it. Now, this is just mine. Yours is going to be totally different. But, so I'm going to just tear right into it and go for it. Um, the first thing on the outside of my bag is this little Walmart knife. I did a review of this before. Um still carrying it around with me and I still use it quite frequently so I like having it right there at hand um, and that's on the outside as I said and I've got this little knife that was also given to me which I almost never use because I really don't like it it's it is a, uh, a SOG knife and you might be able to see all this dirt and clay on it from use just because I don't feel like cleaning it because I'm I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of this knife. It's just riding in here with me. Um, until I can find my Leatherman, then I'm thinking about repurposing the pouch for that. But I don't know where that is either. I found my little one. I don't know where the big one is. So I'm digging around through a lot of stuff that I've pulled out of storage recently. And so the little pocket on the front is, it fits into the mole webbing. 
and it's just got the little survival kit in it, I think, or the little first aid kit, rather, that I talked about in a previous video. Um, sitting right there. Haven't had to dig in it too much. I actually had to yank the tweezers out the other day and pull a tick off one of the kittens, and it's right there where I want it to be. Um, this front pocket, oh, and all the zipper poles are fatwood. So I basically just took a little chunk of fat wood, drilled a hole in one end, and attached it with paracord to some of the zippers, and they just make really nice zipper poles. And then if I need to start a fire, bam, fat wood, ready to go. In the main pocket, or this front pocket, I have an ink pen, because every writer should carry an ink pen. I also have a 45 loaded, extra mag. Um, these are all round nose, full metal jacket because I don't know what kind of situation I would ever need to pull that out of this bag for. Um, and since I don't know the situation, I think I'd go for maximum penetration, especially since I'm out here in the woods and, you know, I don't have to worry about over-penetrating. If there's a threat, you just take out the threat. Um, that pretty much covers the outside. It's got this other little pocket on the side here, and this is kind of like a little fire kit. And unlike most fire kits, this one's pretty simple. I've got some little chunks of fat wood that were harvested from the woods. I think I did a video on that a while ago. This came out of that big um, stump that I was cutting up. And I've got uh, a little packet uh, with two scripto lighters and a little fire steel in there wrapped with a rubber band. Just because it's handy. I also went ahead and threw another fire steel in here because I have, I don't see the bag right now, um, I've got like two bags of these. I was trying to make some little fat wood fire steels and sell them on eBay, but they didn't really sell worth the crap. So I've got that stuff in there and I went ahead and threw in an extra lighter because I've been doing a lot of, uh, with all the rain, I've been practicing my... Um, fire starting with wet materials and trying to harvest like dry tinder and stuff like that so those are getting used up my uh this thing got absolutely crunched the other day when i was running around playing with it um just practicing basically <clears throat> all right what else do we got let's go to the water packet so in the water pouch i have something else that's probably overkill that's been sitting around here forever um, when I first got out here and I was pretty much living off the land uh, for the most part and I had to fi haul five gallon buckets of water up from a pond that's about an eighth of a mile away from here and uh, that was essentially my drinking water. I had to filter it and I fell in love with these little Sawyer filters. They're pretty cheap and they come with all this extra equipment which I never really used because I had the five gallon buckets and I had my own setup. But um, I went ahead and just put all this together in a little pouch. This is one of the, the great big giant Sawyer filters, which is overkill probably for most purposes. But there it is. And a couple squeeze bags. These little squeeze bags, just so you know, that come with this, they are a pain in the ass to fill up with water. So if you can find a bottle that will actually thread into this, and I forget, it's either Coke or Pepsi, like one of the two makes a product that will thread right into these Sawyer filters. Um, if I can figure that out in the future, I will do a video on it. But anyways, that would be good for collection and then just pump the water into one of these bags for like carrying it, storage, that kind of thing. You can also store water in a trash bag or you know, however you want to do it. Use that thing like a straw and just drink straight out of it. Filters are great. Um, it's not the only way to prep water, but it's a pretty good one. This top pouch right here has some things in it that might surprise you. I've got some nitrile gloves here. And I've got oh, a pair of heavy duty nitrile gloves. Um, these are the exact same gloves that I use for work every day. I actually have three more pairs out in the truck in a paper bag from the feed store. They're about $3 a pair, and they're just amazing. I mean, for the price, they hold up better than anything else that I've had. Like, So price for how long they last is awesome. Um, these nitrile gloves here serve two purposes. Number one, they keep my hands dry. And number two, 
um, in the winter time, these provide actually an extra layer of insulation on your, your hands. So you don't, it's one of those things you don't really think about and it's kind of helpful, but you don't really notice it until you notice it. Um, until you notice that your hands aren't frozen. If you're going to, if you're going to be in a wet environment in the cold, like these will get wet and if you're wearing something that's water permeable on top of them of course it's still going to be cold but they do add an extra ins layer of insulation on your fingers plus they're just good for keeping off grease and grime and dirt and um, all kinds of nasty wet stuff but um, so that brings me to a point about this kit this is not a survival kit this is my daily carry kit so it's got a lot of supplies in it for work i'm actually going to be adding now that i've tested them some milwaukee um, earplugs and i'm going to be stuffing them in that top pocket too that way if i run out of my ordinary supply and i can't make it to town because it's the middle of the week or whatever I've got a backup here so um and that's what you should think about when you're making if you've never made any kind of emergency kit before start easy start small just put some stuff in here that you're going to use and use it you know practice with it or whatever and then you can add stuff to the kit as you go now in the main compartment i have a towel this is bigger than a hand towel smaller than a beach towel um that's like two feet by three feet or something like that it's a fairly small towel uh, it's mainly just to make sure my hands are dry and clean before they go in the bag i've got wrong pocket i've got a knife sharpener and this also has a little ferro steel i think hidden in it somewhere i hear it rattling around yep there's another fire steel because this has a little hidden compartment in it and one of these days i will figure out something useful to put in that compartment that actually matches this maybe a little fishing kit or something i don't know but until then i had an extra spot so i tossed a fire steel in there no big deal, no real reason to do it, but I do tend to use fire steels quite frequently and practice with them a lot. Then I've got this thing. This is more fat wood, a little bit lighter mini. There's a couple um, thread bobbins in here, which I think have Kevlar. It looks like one of them has uh, fishing line, the other one has Kevlar thread. Might come in handy. I've also got a little bundle of wire in here which can be used for numerous purposes. I'll probably break it out and use it for a radio antenna at some point. There's one of these little survival blanket dealies and a little bubble compass in the top just because I had one that I scavenged off a kit. I made this years ago and it's been continually like revamped and rebuilt. And there's a little fishing kit in there too. I don't know. It's like my little grab bag. Uh, random survival -y stuff in there Ugh. one of the most important features of this bag is a little bag of trail mix which is holding up quite well against the uh the hot temperatures in the truck which i love it's got raisins m ms and stuff this is about 5,000 calories i worked out the math um before on these bags you can get them from walmart they come in different like flavors and different varieties so you can get whatever you want um Usually these are anywhere from four to six thousand calories in one bag. So this is like two days worth of food um, Theoretically with in a pretty decent sized package So it seems like a lot of food, but if I get stuck somewhere and I'm hungry, I want a snack So I'm going to snack. I also have in here This is new because the other spool ran out and I've run out of paracord and Here's a little tip. You don't need paracord for every freaking thing. Some of these bushcraft guys, I swear, you'd think they were selling it, the stuff or something. Um, like they own stock in the, the world paracord trade. But anyways, this is, what do they call this? This is called drop line. So it's a type of nylon twine. It's pretty strong stuff. You want to tie anything together, this works really, really well. And you can get a hell of a lot more of this than you can of paracord. You can actually take this like probably two or three strands of this and make a bowstring out of it. And it'll be freaking amazing. Um, especially if you have some beeswax to, to wax it down with and you know how to whip it. And I've got that, that little thread in there. I could whip it with fishing line and that would work just fine. Um, just thread 
any kind of cordage is really handy. It doesn't have to be paracord. I have a complete change of clothes that looks like uh, a shirt, a pair of nylon pants. Let me show you something about nylon, okay? This stuff rolls up really, really tiny. So this is a pair of pants that I just rolled together. I made no attempt to like squeeze this down and vacuum seal it. It just rolls up into a nice little bundle and it stuffs right in there. I've also got two pairs of socks. Again, this is not for a survival scenario per se, but having dry clothes to change into sometimes could save your life. And in my case, there are days at work when I absolutely just need something to change into before I go home. I'll come out from a rainstorm and I'm just drenched from head to toe and it sucks, especially when my feet get wet. So there are two pairs of socks in here as opposed to one. And also if my socks get soaked with like that concrete water stuff, then I can get burns on my foot. So that's another reason I carry extra socks on me. Again, work related thing. I've got some of these heavy duty trash bags. I'll probably do a video on these just because um, this is regular run of the mill two, two mil uh, contractor bags. So of course, if you get on the forums, they're going to refer you to whatever the newest, heaviest bag is, which is probably like six mil by now. But um, these pack up smaller and they're, they're plenty tough. I mean, you can carry five gallons of water in one of them bags and not have any problem. And I think that's it. It's a pretty basic um, little setup for all the fanfare and the, the overpriced pack that it's in. But like I said, I got the pack for free and I've had a lot of this stuff just laying around forever. So use what you have around. If you've already got a backpack, don't go out and buy a backpack. Just use your backpack. Um, learn to sew and fix it up. Now there's not a sewing kit in here. My sewing kit's over there. Um, it doesn't get used as frequently as I would like. I've actually got a pile of pants over there that all need to be stitched up because I don't want to throw them away and I would rather have extra clothing around that I don't have to spend any extra money on. But um, I usually don't do sewing when I'm out and about. That's something I do here at the house. So it's not in my kit. Um, if I were going to do like a survival kit for the truck, sewing kit would probably be part of it um but that's it very simple bag again this is not really a survival backpack this is a i need to carry this crap with me otherwise i'm gonna have problems type backpack um things that are going to be added to that is winter progresses is a couple of those little hot hands things because i will buy like a box of those and i don't always keep track of them so well so if i have you know, five or six pairs of them in there with my first aid kit, then that's a backup. So when I reach in the, the compartment in my truck that has the hot hands and there's none left, I've got a backup to fall back on. And that's basically what this is. It just, it backs up the stuff that I need from day to day. And I think if you're getting started in preparedness of any kind, then you need to start being prepared by kind of stocking up a little bit on the things you need most and then putting them in a kit somewhere. Do I need to add these to it too? Ugh. Almost forgot, more earplugs. Um, and just the things that you're gonna use every day or if you can think of something that you might need. I'm gonna be talking about a truck kit soon. So obviously I need to find my jumper cables. I found my ice scraper. So I can put that out there because it's about to start getting a lot colder here pretty soon. Um, things like that, like have this stuff in your vehicle, have it with you. Um, I could take this backpack out to the woods and it's got more than enough gear for what I need. Just go out there, take a hatchet with me and I can have fun all day and I don't have to worry about anything. Um, yeah, that's it, man. Keep it simple. Like don't freak out and be like, oh, I need to go buy this and this and this and this and this and blah, blah, blah. Now I did do a video on upgrading a first aid kit from Walmart, but to be perfectly honest, that little kit, a little $5 box, it's like this big, um, it's smaller than my head. It's a perfectly suitable first aid kit for most people. Like if you just want to grab something on the go, now it's better to have a pair of tweezers and you know, some kind of triple antibiotic ointment and stuff like that. But 
if you just want to grab something quick and you've got an extra five dollars burning a hole in your pocket and you don't have a first aid kit at all it's better than nothing um so don't think like you have to go out and buy a bunch of junk just gather up stuff you have around the house maybe grab a couple band-aids out of the band-aid box and toss them in a little Altoids tin or something and be like their simple first aid kit for band-aids anyways you know and then you can add to it later or you can go buy one of these little kits and have some different stuff or you can buy a pack of alcohol wipes and some bandages and duct tape and then you're you're good to go for most uh you know the big cloth bandages and then some duct tape you're good to go for most little minor emergencies you know, it's just um so taking stock take stock of what you use what you consume have some extras um whatever you're normally expected to encounter in your day now i don't change clothes at work every single day but there have been days when i'm really just i need to change clothes there are days when i just need a freaking poncho and i don't want to burn up a 20 or 30 dollar poncho on wet weather at work when it's just going to get torn up by concrete and just throw a freaking uh contractor bag over my head and cut a hole in it and i'm good to go you know it's um just stuff that you need to back up what you're already doing and then you can build the rest of your kit around that because your kit is really just um the stuff that you really need so start small work your way up and then if you want to get into like survival training and stuff i wouldn't even recommend getting a kit to go out to start with i would go somewhere nearby like a park or something and or like real close to the road on a um whatever one of them little woodsy areas it's more like a park than the real woods but or you know it's not quite a hunting trip and just uh practice some stuff and you'll get an idea real quick like what kinds of stuff you need and what you might not need and just stay close to your truck and then as you put together the supplies that you really need to get going then you can move further away from your truck or you can set up like a little base camp with a tent and a fire or whatever just don't make it complicated um life's too complicated already to be listening to internet commandos tell you what sell you what they think you need to survive in the woods um start basic keep it small and keep it where it makes sense you know have stuff on you that you're gonna that you're gonna use if you're not gonna use it there's no sense in buying it most people have stuff in their emergency kits that they won't even use in an emergency so I, don't, I don't get it oh, i really really don't but anyways that's it um i'm gonna go to bed so i'm probably not gonna post this video tonight i'll post it tomorrow or the next day and it's kind of long but hopefully worth it um just figured i'd show you my little pack and kind of rant and banter a little bit about different things and i think i've done that so keep watching don't forget to subscribe and i'm gonna be doing a lot more cool stuff um it just depends as i get time like tonight i didn't get home till the sun went down so it made for an interesting evening anyways i'm gonna go check on the kitties and i'm gonna go to bed you guys have a great night and i hope to see you again soon